And based on that, you know, we're talking D1 here, and you, you have worked with a lot of players that have gone D1, and a majority of the players out there are guards. What does it take for a guard to play D1? Yeah, you got to have a defined identity. I think the sooner you know your strengths and weaknesses. And so that kind of goes back to like when I do meet with fans, and I just want to reiterate this, like I'm not shooting their dreams <laughs> now, but I want to give them, I don't want to oversell them. Like if you don't make this decision because I'm saying you can go D1 from here, I just think that's not a, that's not a great way to be because not everyone can go Division One. The next thing is like, Having a defined playing style, one of the things I meet with every family and I, I go through a presentation and I talk to them about like, what is it going to look like when you're playing for me? And the goal is that when you finish playing for me, you have a strong idea of who you are on the basketball floor. Like not, not your position, but your strengths and weaknesses and how you impact winning. So for a guard, can you shoot? Are you a high level shooter? Are you a high level defender? Are these things that you can hang your hat on that you can do on a nightly basis consistently? So smaller guards. Yeah, everybody tells you guard 94 feet. Yeah, you probably need to be able to do that if you're under six feet. You need to be able to impact the game that way. Um, scoring, like shooting. Are you a consistent shooter? That can hold you back. Being a streaky shooter versus being a consistent shooter can make can change the difference in your career trajectory. And so these are things when you come here, you know, we'll work on those things. We want to be more consistent at shooting. And then the next thing is just like being able to play in different paces and different systems, being able to adapt. Like some kids at around this age, they play one speed. Mm it's hard especially for that kid who's athletic quick and twitchy to slow down like maybe you going slower might be more effective today versus you trying to go 100 miles per hour and so for me like we I want to watch a lot of film with our guys so they can see these things and the differences um, because sometimes it's literally just getting that little component like slow down like play with pace you know, don't play at one speed, change your speeds. That can be something that can um, change you. But I do think like the main thing that you hard your hat on is like defense. I don't think a lot of kids, we live in the highlight era. Yeah. Yes, there are some extreme people who can really score. But at the next level, the division one level, you can't score 20 and then give up 30. It doesn't help the team win. So that's where I know at my, and I'll give a shout out to South Kent. We spend so much time on defense that guys, when they go to college, they're ready to play right away because they're ready and sound defensively. And that sticks out to some schools. Like I know Fairfield, they offered one of our guys. He was a good shooter, but he got that little bit of hump because of what we did defensively. And so kids buying into that piece too, like just buying into like, you know, at the next level, what you're striving for, you want to play division one, you want to be on scholarship. Are you guarding like a division one player? They're like, some kids just don't like that. Like, but is that, are you really guarding at a level that translates? Love and you know, no one's sending you video of them being in help side. <laughs> and I don't think coaches want to see that either. But when they go see you in the summer, they do want to see that.